This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Uh, hi, today I have an interesting case. Well, it was a case which had a rare but sight threatening complication post cataract surgery and let me share my uh, quite a terrifying experience. This is the pandemic and uh, uh, we are in post lockdown stage. Uh, this is a one eyed patient who came for a cataract surgery of the blind eye which had this white cataract but vision was negative light perception with an total pressure of 50 mm of mercury. Well, that eye had absolute glaucoma. Whether this was a long standing primary angle closure glaucoma with a cataract or an ignored long-standing phacomorphic lens induced glaucoma it was difficult to tell I wasn't sure. The angles were closed with 360 degrees peripheral anti-sanicia. The other eye, her vision was counting finger 2 meters and a posterior subcapsular cataract with a dense nucleus sclerosis. The pressure was 19. The chamber seemed alright and not very alarming. And this is the biometry reading with a marginally shallow interchamber and an axial length of around 22 millimeters. Well, the patient was explained that the cataract surgery was possible only in this better eye and we're expecting a good visual outcome in this eye. Well, I didn't expect anything unusual to happen both intraoperatively and postoperatively. I thought this was a routine case and as routine as one could expect. The surgery was performed under tropical anesthesia. It was a routine case of phacomulsification. The intraocular lens implanted into the bag. The case was completed. No issues at all. Next day, the patient is happy and this is the recorded vision. Three days later, the patient continues to do well. Eight days post-op, she presents with a sudden drop in vision since one day and she gives a history of vomiting four times overnight and obviously was shocked to see her. Her vision had dropped to counting finger close to face, the antechamber was flat, significant coronal edema was seen there and intraocular pressure was 50 mm of mercury. I checked her records once again to get some idea about this unexpected incident. Now keeping the other eye condition perspective that is an absurd glaucoma secondary to angle closure disease and the clinical appearance of this eye with a flat antechamber, I did make a diagnosis of postoperative secondary angle closure glaucoma, most likely malignant glaucoma. However, since there was no iridectomy done primarily, pupillary block glaucoma was still a theoretic possibility. But for me, uh, the way it was appearing clinically, it looked more like a malignant glaucoma. Immediately, IV manitol was started along with topical anti-glaucoma medications, oral acetazolamide, plus topical drops and atropine eye drops. This is a slit lamp picture taken 2 hours after the medications. The intraocular pressure had dropped to 30 mm of mercury. Pupil was well dilated. But the chamber was still flat. Laser iridotomy was difficult since the visibility was not great because of the uh, coronal edema and the inflammation. I decided that surgical intervention was a better option since it gave me more options and higher chance of success at a single shot. My plan was to take the patient to operation theatre, do a surgical iridectomy with zonalectomy through the iridotomy and then in halidotomy through the same hole if possible and then decide whether to go ahead and do a pass plan antivitrectomy or not based on how the eye would behave on the table. The surgery is being done under subtenance anesthesia. I make two paracentesis incisions and my left hand has the irrigation handpiece and the right has the retractor. The machine is set in irrigation, aspiration and cut mode and these are the settings. The erectomy is performed. Now I am going more posteriorly to the most peripheral part of the bag in the hope of performing zonalectomy and also anterior hyalidotomy through the same route. Of course, this is a semi-blind procedure.
this point, the red glow is seen through the aerodotomy indicating its complete patency. The eyeball has suddenly become very soft and chamber deepens without any issue. Now looking at the way the chamber suddenly deepened and a soft eye was seen, I was relieved and I was certain that this case is sorted out in a single shot. I thought maybe it was just a pupillary block or my iridectomy, zonulectomy and hyalurotomy have worked so the chamber has deepened suddenly. So I go back and suture the side port wound with a single 10 ovicral suture and then I schedule the case to be reviewed the next day. Next day morning, patient has had an early visit to the OPD. Well, my agony continues. The patient has had three bouts of vomiting since 3 a.m. in the morning. The corny was steamy, the AC was shallow, intraocular pressure is again shot up to 40 millimeters of mercury. Well, again, the patient was started on IV mannitol, and once the pressure was reduced 28, this is how the eye looked. The peripheral AC is totally absent. There is some amount of anti chamber present in the central part. The PI is large and patent. In this slit, we can see that the lens is being mechanically pushed forward with something which is posterior to it. Well, this picture was quite confirmatory of the fact that we were dealing with malignant glaucoma, which had not yet been resolved. Now, following was my strategy. To begin with, try a shot of uh, YAG laser capsulotomy with anterior hyalurotomy. Since the corneal edema had decreased significantly and visualization was better. Secondly, if it doesn't improve in the next 12 hours, then I decided to take the patient to OR and perform the past plana antivitrectomy. I performed laser capsulotomy and also aimed a couple of shots slightly posterior, hoping to disrupt the anterior hyaloid. Then I lasered through the iridectomy hole as well, hoping to disturb the anterior hyaloid there. Well, the intentions were right, but I was not sure about the execution as the visibility was still not great. And I was also not sure about the outcomes. Anyway, I was ready with my next step if this did not work out. The next day, morning 9 a.m., the first thing I asked her was, did she sleep well? The attenders were very happy to inform that for the first time in the last three days, she slept well and as I examined, I was relieved mightily. The chamber was deep, the cornea was clear, the pupil was well dilated, intraocular pressure was 6 mm of mercury. Well, finally I thought something worked. Well, I was glad that the laser capsulotomy and the hyalurotomy worked to relieve uh, the marinate glaucoma. Uh, this was the capsulotomy seen through the slit lamp and I tried to capture the hyaloid rupture through the OCT and these are some of the images which I could capture. Well, on the hand side, it appears that I should have tried laser capsulotomy with the laser anterior hyaluronotomy at the first instance itself before doing the surgical aridectomy. Well, I have already explained my thought process during the management. It's always easier to think and plan in the hindsight, but uh, that was my thought process going in. We continued her stay for two more days to monitor any recurrence of attacks. Thankfully, the condition of the eye remained good and the patient was finally discharged. I'm continuing atropine for at least one more month and along with the steroid medications. The anti glaucoma medications have been stopped at the end of one week and she continues to do well. This was an extremely unusual experience for me. I have had three experiences of post-op malignant glaucomas in the past and all were following trabeculectomy or phacotrabeculectomy in cases of chronic anglocular glaucomas. But this was my only experience with a case of melanin glaucoma following cataract surgery. So let me summarize few learnings from this case. This indeed was a case of melanin glaucoma which developed 6 days after the cataract surgery. In an eye which was vulnerable, patient was primary angle closure suspect. The other eye was blind because of uh, primary angle closure glaucoma. We need to be aware of this rare complication following cataract surgery in a small subject of vulnerable eyes. Making a quick diagnosis based on the examination findings is critical and then decisive treatment plan either surgical or laser therapy has to be executed uh, immediately.
simply sitting on the problem and treating with medicine is not going to work for these patients and in fact it's going to make things significantly worse so in a confirmed case of malignant glaucoma an iris zonulo hydrectomy combined with antivitrectomy is the definitive procedure the goal basically is to make the eye unicameral that is an eye with one chamber by combining both the anterior and the posterior chambers that's it thank you for your attention and hope this helps